In some of my previous videos, I have discussed about the numerical differentiation. Now I am going to welcome you for the numerical integration. Uh, I will present this in a couple of videos. In today's video, I will present the basic idea behind the definite integral. So first I will start by explaining the relationship between the integral and the derivatives and the requirement and the importance of constant of integration. Uh, then we will see the Riemann sum and area under the curve. And uh, then we will see how we can use the mathematical concepts of limit and series to convert the Riemann sum into the definite integral and at the end I will discuss about the area of a function which is negative and in next video I will discuss about the Riemann sum and the summary of this video. So let's start with the integration as we know that the integration is the reverse operation of the derivative. If I need to take the integral of 2x it is x square and if i need to take the derivative of x square it is 2x generally we represent the symbol by a stylish s and then there is an integ integrand or the function which we need to integrate and we declare the variable which is the variable in this case so let, uh, let's take this example to understand the concept or the relationship between the derivation and derivative and integration. So uh, we have a tab, tab filling a, a tank. So the flow rate and volume of the water are linked in some way that it explains the relationship between the derivative and integration. So how flow rate and volume are linked, this is shown here, that if we have the flow rate, which is a constant here, then the volume will increase in such a way that its slope will be constant. In other words, we can say that the behavior of the volume curve will be such that the flow rate is given as the slope of this curve. So this is the relationship between the integration and the derivation. So constant of integration has a little trickier part to play here. So if I want to integrate this 2x, I can write it as x square. I can write it as x square plus 4 x squared plus 3 or x squared minus 6, but the derivative of all these terms will be a single term uh, 2x. So what is the reason behind it? If I want to, uh, if I want to fill a tub, a tank with a, with a flow rate, then I have to see what volume is available to me. And then I will draw a volume curve. So this C will tell us what is available to us. And then we build up with the flow, what is going to get, what we are going to get as the volume. So in other words, uh, the C will help us to give the information that uh, what is the height of the function. So it will not change the nature of the function, if it is parabola, then it will remain parabola, but C will tell us what is the height of the function. So it is important uh, in this regard that it helps the physical interpretation very well. Riemann sum and area under the curve. Riemann sum is the technique in which we divide area under the curve in rectangles. And then with the help of rectangles, we can uh, calculate the area. So in this, in this case, we see that this is the width and this is the height of a rectangle. So this is given by delta x. 
and this is the this height is the function functional value so it is f of x1 so i have height of the function i have width of the function i can find area of this rectangle this will be f of x the area will be f of x into delta of x as this length is constant so i need to note the value of the function at this point and then i'm going to get what is required so Riemannism is a technique in which we divide our uh, range from which is starting from x naught to x n into equal parts in equal sub interval and then choose some value c to get the height of the function and then multiply this height of the function with width of the function so uh, with width of the rectangle so height and into weights will give me the area of a single rectangle and then i will sum up all the areas of the rectangle to get area under the curve so here is a representation of what i am saying i am saying that i can select c as xi so c1 might be uh, this so c xi i can consider this height for the rectangles and i can consider the other heights available for the rectangles so these are the height which are available these are the height which are available and the middle point of the sub of the rectangle can also be considered as height so i will cover the, uh, the portion of freeman sum in the next video but here i am just highlighting that it might be anything and it will give us the area it will give us the area under the curve for example if i have a curve and i want to approximate it uh, no matter what uh, the height i am going to take if i make the interval smaller and smaller you can see that the error in the area value will be reduced and i am going to get a good error approximation with higher number of subdivision this is the case when i am going to take an other kind of the height and i am going to get the same result so you know it it will mm, depend upon the value of n or the number of partition to get the accurate value it will not depend upon the in the height which we are taking and i will cover this in my separate video so computing the rect area of rectangle under a function so we know that we can compute the area with the help of uh, rectangle so i need to make the rectangle and then i can add up the area of all rectangle to get the area under the curve so what is the formula i need to take the height of the rectangle and then multiply it with width of the rectangle so here is the height of the rectangle so this is the height of the rectangle and this is width of the rectangle so i am going to get this area of first rectangle with the help of this formula then the second one then the third one and then the fourth one so in this way i am going to get the area and uh, you can see that uh, it is the height multiplied by the width so height into width height into width it is the simple formula that we are going to use here to get area under the curve for these four cases when we increase this partition we are going to get a better approximation of the area uh, as can be seen uh, in the figures and we will prove it as well so area of a rectangle when the number of partition is given with the n uh, is obtained in the similar way that we have to multiply height with the length uh, or height with the width of the rectangle and then summing up all the rectangle 
to get the area under a particular curve with number of deviation or number of sub interval by n so now we can compare the area under the curve for the function uh, 2x minus 2x square over the interval 0 1 with the partition size n equal to 10 and n equal to 20 so here you can see that this is the function and i have made 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 sub intervals so in these 10 sub interval i can calculate the area of each rectangle and then by summing it up i'm going to get the area under the curve with n equal to 10. now if i have n equal to 20 means i have uh, 20 rectangles for which i need to for which i need to get the area of each rectangle and then sum it up which will give me area of area under the curve with n equal to 20. so how can we compute it mathematically i need to com compute a10 and a20 so first of all this is the formula for computing a n so i need to sum up area of all the rectangle here delta x which is fixed it may be written as h as well which is b minus a by n means equal uh, n equal uh, distance data so n is equal to 10 will give me h is equal to 1 minus 0 by 10 which is equal to 0 0.1 so x naught x1 x2 up till xn will be 0 0 0.1 0 0.2 up to 1 similarly when i have n is equal to 20 i need to calculate h and in this case 1 minus 0 so this one is basically uh, the b and 0 is the a so 1 minus 0 divided by 20 will give me 0 0.1 so i will start from 0 0 0.05 0 0.1 up till 1 so these will be 21 data values over here so how can I compute the values at A10? To compute A10, I have to calculate the function value at this point. Function is given here. I need to compute these values and then I have to add them up as this is a constant thing. So I can take it out and my answer is 0 0.33. In case of 20, I have to do the same procedure and the answer is 0 0.3325. So, uh, and detailed explanation of what we have done we have found the value and inserted it here to get 0 0.33 so you can see over here that addition is and then we have add all the values and then multiply it with 0 0.1 which is delta x in this case and similarly we can calculate the same thing for n equal to 20 for in this case we have 0 0.01 0 0.1 0 0.15 and so on 20 values and i need to add up all these 20 value for the all these 20 functional values and then multiply it with h in this case h is 0 0.05 and the answer is 0 0.3325 So a Riemann sum and definite integral can, what is the link between these two things? As what I have done earlier, I can see that if n approaches to zero, then there will be no error in area under the curve. So area under the curve will be accurate if n approaches to infinity. And if I make a make calculations such that if an, uh, i can calculate this uh, uh, this limit easily then i am going to calculate the area accurately so what is the procedure to calculate this limit um, so let's start delta x in this case i am not going to uh, insert the number n but i will keep it as n so that everything will be in the form of n and then at the end i can put the limit n approaches to infinity so 1 minus 0 over n will be the delta x in case of n so it is 1 over n as we know that x naught is 0 then x i which is 
in general x naught plus i delta x so x naught is zero it is i delta x now so in case of in, in this case x i is equal to i over n i can put the value of x i in the function to get this kind of an expression and i can calculate the area of a single ith rectangle in the form of f of x i into delta x i so i have the expression of the function over here i have the expression for the delta value over here so it is just multiplying with 1 over n with this function so i'm going to get 2 over n square into i plus 2 over n cube into i so this is the area of a single rectangle ith rectangle so how can i get the area of uh, all the triangles i need to sum them up so i can sum from 1 to n f of x i delta x so it will be uh, as 2 and n are the constant things so summation will uh, be acting on i in both of the cases in first case it is i in second case it is i square so what is the sum of i varies from 1 to n i means sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 what is the formula of this and what is the formula in case of scale we know it from the sequence and series chapter that this is the formula in case of i and this is the formula in case of i square so if i simplify it i'm going to get an expression for a n so this is the expression for a n you can see that if i put uh, n is equal to 10 i'm going to get 0 0.33 which we have obtained earlier with a different case a different method and a20 which is 0 0.3325 so i can now calculate any other thing that i need i want to calculate and uh, i can see that if i increase the number of partition my answer is getting better and better so what what happened when n approaches to infinity the answer goes to 1 over 3 which is 0 0.3333 an infinite sequence of 3 so how it resembles with the definite integral so if i need to have the definite integral of this thing the answer is in this case x square minus 2 by 3 x cube from 0 to 1 if i insert the value i'm going to get 1 over 3 so this is the way of getting the uh, uh, area under the curve using Riemann sum and this is the definite integral method so both are equal so in short we can obtain these integrals with the help of these and we have simplified the formulas and named them as integration so this is the mathematics behind the integration definite integral now i'm going to discuss when the area uh, the function have negative value suppose there is a situation from a to b the function have a positive value and i need to calculate the area between x-axis and under the curve then there is a situation from b to c that the function have negative value in that case i also calculate the area between x-axis and above the curve and i will get the total area by just adding the area a1 and a2 so um, this is all in this video and the next video which is connecting to this one uh, is will be about remand sum so if you have any query you can email me thank you very much for your time